Well hello everybody, my name is Joshua, welcome to my channel. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about mainly the new FLIR DM284 thermal multimeter, um, but I also wanted to do a uh, comparison, not really a versus kind of thing, one better than the other, but I wanted to compare it with a uh, the Fluke 289. Now if you know the, the new FLIR is rather expensive, so I kind of wanted to compare it to something of the same expense range, seeing what you get, what you're paying for kind of thing. So that's that. So let's go in, shall we? Okay, so here's the box right here. We're not really doing an unboxing video per se, um, but here's the box right here. Uh, it does say thermal imager on the side, and the one thing I noticed on this box, they don't really talk about all the features that this camera or that this uh, multimeter has. The main thing that they're really talking about is how it can do thermal imaging, which, I mean, I guess that's what they're selling in this is a thermal multimeter, so, but you get what you pay for, and actually it's a very good multimeter, so we'll go into that later. Uh, but what exactly do you get in the box? Well, you get a set of very nice test leads here. Um, they are the silicone. Uh, they well, are relatively right sharp. Um, they're not all too sharp, but uh, they're pretty good. And they're pretty standard. Um, you also get some generic paperwork, so activate your warranty, uh, more about flu FLIR test equipment, um, and they are Cat 4 insulated probes. Uh, you do get some alligator clip arms, and they also give what I really like about this multimeter more than probably any other one I've ever had. Um, this is your instruction. These are quick start guides. Um, you may be able to find some more online, but the thermal imaging has its own little quick start guide, and it's only like two pages long. And the multimeter itself has its own quick start guide, which is four pages long. So they make it quite, pretty simple, pretty easy to get forward through everything. So beyond that, um, we can step on into the, uh, I keep wanting to call it a camera, it's not a camera. Keep, uh, let's step into the multimeter, okay? Okay, so here is the FLIR uh, DM284. Uh, you'll notice it's it's got your normal fluke-like kind of stuff. Uh, it's got a very responsive click wheel here. Uh, it has a couple functions at the top, mode, range. Uh, it has a um, LED light. Here is your thermal uh, camera right here, and your back, and your hold, as well as some menu keys right here. Um, it does do amperage and milliamps. It goes up to 10 amps max and up to 400 milliamps max. On the back here, you got a little quick kickstand. Um, it does take four AAA batteries, and we'll talk more about battery life later, uh, but they do have this optional um, lead placement area. Um, you can take it off. There's a single flathead screw right there that you can just pop it off. Um, in the back, well actually, the top right here, that is your LED flashlight, and it's actually very, very bright. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, it's very wide, though, and it does have a hint of blue, so some people aren't too fond of that. Um, the case itself, so older flukes were able, you were able to take the old, or you were able to take the yellow um, rubber buffer off, and with the newer ones, uh, this one included cannot take it off. So this is actually, it's molded onto it, it's part of the unit. But beyond that, it feels very robust, it feels very good in your hands, um, compared to this thing where it's just absolutely enormous, but <laughs> whatever. So also on the back here, um, this is where your thermal imager is at. Um, I do not know if anybody can see that, but it's actually sitting in right in here and there's like a little shutter that goes over top of it and oh now you can see it so uh, the one this one over here that is a red LED or a red laser 
and the next to it, that's how you get your thermal imaging done. And then you can pull the shutter right back over it. So, all right, well, let's go further into this then. Okay, so the things that I see in this that other multimeters don't have that I like, um, it has, I hate to say it, it's a very basic multimeter but with the addition of the thermal camera on it. And that's, in my opinion, what makes it more expensive. Um, I, I like it because it's, it's a normal multimeter, it's basic. This isn't very basic, and that's why I wanted to do some comparison. We'll do a side-by-side -side view and seeing what, you're, what you get, what this can do over this, and what this can do over the Fluke. Um, some of the things that this can do over the Fluke is this does have a, um, it's got its own volt, like a volt alert, so if you're having, if you wanted to check to see if it has, uh, if your AC line is energized, you can put it right next to it and it'll beep. Um, it's, I've noticed it's not the world's greatest. Uh, it seems that you literally have to be right on top of it, which, okay, that's fine. Um, I like the just the, the hot sticks is what the firemen call it, hot sticks. Um, I like the little sticks you can just move around and it beeps at you or turns a light on. I'm just more familiar with that. Um, some of the other things it has, it has a dedicated um, amperage um, clamp, amp clamp. Um, it has a dedicated spot just for that. So you can actually set your range here from 100 millivolts or yeah 100 millivolts to 10 millivolts 10 amps 1 millivolt 1 amp or it can just auto do it so that's pretty straightforward um, but it does I do like the LED flashlight uh, it's it looks blue there and it looks blue here too so it's more on the upper spectrum and the lower spectrum, but it looks like it's a normal yellow, well, like a whitish. Um, it's it's pretty pretty bright. Um, in places like this, it's not very good. But when you're up in a ceiling, I don't. I'm, I'm used to using an old BlackBerry as my my looking device. Um, it's okay. It works out well. Um, let's talk about battery life. So battery life, flukes are. Flukes get pretty good battery life. I mean, I had an 87.5 and I got several years out of a battery. For this FLIR here, I get around 12, maybe 15 hours of battery life. Maybe. Um, you have to look at the specs on that. Um, I think it's like 12 or 13 hours um, just on the four AAA batteries and once you turn on that thermal camera it shoots it down to like three hours. Battery life is horrendous. Horrendous. I absolutely despise it. Um, but you can get, they do have an upgrade pack. Uh, you can get a lithium ion battery pack and it will replace, I'm not exactly what it, sure what it, the whole, I don't know if it replaces the whole back end or what, um, but it, it will replace uh, your AAA batteries and it'll extend it up to like another 12 hours or something like that. Um, and it's probably a pretty good investment unless you have a lot of AAAs to burn through. Um, the other thing, a couple other things I'm not too keen about. So when you're in your volt alert, let's, let's move a little closer here. So right now we're in the amp clamp area mode. So let's say I wanna go up to AC voltage. It turns off and then you have to wait for it to turn back on. And I realize it's not that big of a deal but they put the, in the, the they put the off in a random location, and I can't think of it. I've ever seen a multimeter put it the off one fourth away through your through your settings. I don't I don't know. I'm I'm not a big fan of that, and I know it's only a couple couple of seconds you have to wait, but I'd rather it be at the very bottom where most of them are. Or in the case of the two eight nine, it's like a mini computer. The on off button is right here. That's your on off button. So your whole click wheel is anything you want. Um, so beyond that, it's it's a it's a pretty good multimeter. So 
let's start going into the various settings and seeing what you're paying for. Something else I wanted to add for, um, and I forgot to mention it, um, it's about the battery life. So it's, it's actually quite interesting um, because once this device gets below 25%, it automatically kicks off the LED flashlight and the thermal mode, meaning that once it hits that 25% threshold battery life, you can no longer use the LED flashlight and the thermal imager, which might be okay for somebody, um, but it's, it's kind of annoying because it forces you, if you need it, it forces you to change your batteries. So there's something else to think of. Um, for me, I just suck it up and just use a flashlight if I need it or just don't use a thermal camera. So, um, And the other thing about the thermal camera is um, it's, it's actually a pretty good thermal imager. It really is. And I, I want to be careful when I say thermal camera because it's not really a camera. It's more of a, mm, I almost want to say a viewfinder. Uh, I, I would be careful even saying that. You can't save images. It's you literally you cannot save images. You can just look at it for diagnostic pur diagnostic purposes, and that's it. No saving on the image. Um, what I've done before is um, take my iPhone, take a picture of the camera or of the the multimeter, and that's that's how I save an image. But beyond that, there's no memory card insertion. There's no f flash memory. Nothing like that. That's it.